Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today, my guest is Angela Davis. Angela is a blogger at the blog Frugal Living Northwest, and she is also an affiliate marketing expert. So welcome to the show, Angela. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. So I am really excited because one one thing that I don't think we've delved, I've delved deep into is affiliate marketing. So to have somebody who lives and breathes this is so exciting for me. Well, I am excited to share with your listeners uh, how they can make more money off of the work that they're already doing on their websites and their platforms. And one thing is that when I've asked people in the past, if you're a new, you know, if you were to give advice for how new bloggers can make money quickly, a lot of them will say do affiliate marketing. Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know about the quickly part, okay. but I but I think that affiliate marketing is the place that you should start, especially if you're beginning or really any, anywhere you are right now, start adding those links in because that's when, you know, now is the time to start, to start getting that money rolling in. Um, it's, we can talk about this a little bit later as well, but it's affiliate marketing is a slow burn. You're not going to make a ton of money starting right out. It's more kind of like doing the work now so that in the future you can continue to earn Uh, money on the work that you're creating. Okay, so wait, before we get into it, can you describe what affiliate marketing is? Affiliate marketing, you could think of it kind of like referral, making referral money. So when you promote another business or brand's product or service, um, you get basically a commission when you make the sale. So if you sell something to a reader, that business will give you a cut of, of the um, amount that the per- the item was. So it could either be a percentage, so between you know 0.1% all the way up to it can be pretty big, like 50 to 70 percent of that uh, of that the price that the person paid, or it could be a flat fee for you get bringing that customer to the brand or business. Okay. Could we start with then how you started your blog and how you got into affiliate marketing? Well, back in 2008, I stumbled upon um, a blog. I didn't know it was a blog. I guess it was a website. And this woman was sharing how she was using coupons at the grocery store and the drug stores to get a lot of stuff for free and some of the stuff she was even making money on. And so I am um, frugal by nature, or maybe I was taught to be frugal or some people might call it cheap um, (laughs) as a child. And so I was completely hooked. I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever experienced. I apparently have low expectations in life. (laughs) And so I started doing it myself. I had at that point three little, little kids and I would drag them around town and we would go couponing and it was so much fun. Then about the end of 2008, I real I I was like, I think I, I should start a blog. I should do the same thing, helping women in particularly the Pacific Northwest of the U S um, learn how to use coupons and then help them how to use coupons to get free stuff and cheap stuff and help their grocery budget, um, every single week. And so a friend and I started a blog. I don't know how I figured it out. I think I Googled a little bit, um, that, that came, um, became frugallivingnorthwest.com. Um, and that was also, um, coincidentally, and actually, It was very good timing on my part because then that's when we all realized that the market had crashed. And so, so many women my age in their late twenties, thirties, forties, um, they were either losing jobs or their husbands were losing their jobs and they needed to save money quickly. And so, um, I, I had a captive audience from the very beginning. And so we went along for a couple of years doing that. And then in about 2010, Um, My blog was still growing. I was just hustling because I enjoyed it so much. And my husband and I went to a blogging conference and I had this aha aha moment that if I were going to continue to do this, I needed to treat the blog as a business instead of a hobby. So if I wanted to make money and really in order for my husband to be on board with me spending so much time on this website, 
we needed to be making money. Um, so we decided at that conference that we were going to treat the blog as a business and mm -hmm. give it the time and energy that it required to, um, to be a business and to make money. Cause there's one thing that my husband and I, we both love to save money, but we love to make money even more. <laughs> I like um, your husband. Yes. 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 He's, he's, he's all in at this point. Okay. So then that back in 2000, like 10, 11, that started a journey for me to figure out how I could monetize my blog and my content while still having the type of life I wanted to have with my family, my friends and my community. And wait, so you've like, got, you've got five kids. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I've added some since then. Okay. No, I mean I still have five. Okay, but I mean but like... when I started out, I had three, and then we added two more. Okay. So yeah, I, I have a boatload of kids. Okay. Yeah. Um. So probably for the last eight years, I've been experimenting with different ways to monetize my site using different strategies. All the while. I'm helping women and families live well on a budget in the Pacific Northwest. So like I have this mission to help women and families live well on a budget, um, particularly in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, but also how can I make money while doing that? So if there's a way to make money with a blog, I have most likely tried it. Okay. So at this, so at this point, um, with my website, uh, I, don't work a whole lot because, again, I never have been able to work anywhere close to full time because, again, the children. Um, but I make uh, my blog earn six figures and I work probably a little bit less than what most people work part time. Wow. Wow. OK, let's dig in. So tell us your secrets. <laughs> How do you do that? The secret is that there are absolutely no secrets. I know. Um, I, know. I know. And people don't want to hear that, no, do they? But it's, no. But it's really the truth. I, I. It's funny because we have another site called Catch My Party. And we have a lot of traffic. And people tell me all the time, like, how did you do that? And I say, it is a long slog. And if there were a magic bullet, you better believe we'd be using it. Amen. There is no magic bullet. It is hustle. Um, there is some luck involved. Like if you were to look at my story, you know, I started my blog 10 years ago when there weren't a lot of blogs and right. there were a lot of women right. who were at home looking for something, um, we're looking for a way to contribute to their household income. Right. And, and the so, economy tanked. So you the were economy right there. Tanked. Yep. And there weren't a lot of people around yet. So if I were to start the same blog today, it would not take off. I would not be, you know, earning six figures working part time. It would be a completely different story. OK, so let's. OK, so yes. So uh, as I was saying, if you, you don't have any secrets, but what what strategies? Somebody is OK, so somebody is a blogger. I mean, let's start with a new blogger. And what you were talking about, which is how to think like an affiliate marketer. First of all, my biggest piece of advice is do not be scared of selling. Ooh. You, you cannot be afraid to sell. Now, my website is a bit unique and, and deal blogs and, for, you know, the type of site that I, the niche that I'm in. We're a little unique in that. Generally, I have readers coming to me ready to buy. They're like, show me the deals. Tell me what's a good deal on Amazon. Tell me how I can save money at this place. So like they're already ready to purchase. So there's some of your listeners that are like, I, my readers aren't coming to me to buy something. They're coming to me to learn something, to be inspired. But in general, they are okay, <clears throat> okay being sold to, and they actually expect to be sold to. Now, there's going to be a handful of people that are going to fuss at you about selling, especially if you have not been doing it mm. or you're trying to do it super covertly. Like, maybe I'll sneak this in and they won't realize. They know what's happening. Mm. Um, it's not the 30s or 40s anymore. People realize when they're being sold to. You're going to get some people are going to fuss at you at first and that's okay. That's absolutely to be expected. I still have people fussing at me. It's usually people in emailing me in all caps. And mm. if I see an email in all caps, I'm like, see you later. I don't have time for that. Um, but be okay with selling. And once you're, once you convince yourself that it is okay for you to make money on the work that you are producing, mm. a whole new world opens up. So 
be okay. okay selling. So the first is the mind, the the mindset shift. And I know a lot of women who struggle with this. Yes, I don't know any men who sit around feeling bad that they are earning an income from their work, but for yep. some reason, women do. Yep. Somehow they're losing their authenticity. I was at a oh. I was at a mm-hmm. conference with a woman who is also an a, an affiliate marketer. And, but yet she struggles with selling that somehow she's selling out somehow mm-hmm. she's she's not as credible and i said oh no you're even more credible because you're trying to help people and saying i'm making a living at the same time so i can be more helpful exactly it it is and and it, you get buy in from your family and your community when you're making money off of the work that you're doing it, and, and there is nothing that we can do to fix the culture that makes us kind of feel icky or like maybe we should be giving away our work. That's just how it is. You just got to tell yourself it is okay. Like you have to overcome what you're hearing from people and what you feel inside. It is okay to hustle and make money from the work that you're doing. And actually you're serving your reader well when you point them to products and services that you know will be helpful to them. There is nothing more maddening for me as a reader or a consumer of content. When I see someone that I think is really awesome, she's a good writer, she's giving me really good tips and she doesn't tell me how to get the things she's talking about. Yes. Or she doesn't give me a call to action. Like don't, like that's almost disappointing. So there you're gonna have a lot of readers coming to you who are looking to purchase something because you're solving a problem for them. So give them that opportunity. Like you may as well make be making money off of it. So that's my encouragement. Just get over that whole being scared um, of how people will see your work if you're making money. I like that. Okay. So I'm a new blogger and uh, let's pick a category. I am a kids activity blogger. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a teacher. Let's say I was a teacher and now I'm staying home with my kids. I do really fun stuff at home with them. I document it. What would you say to me? How can I start making affiliate money? Well, this is probably the lamest answer on earth, but really just start. Start Ah. doing it. You don't have to have a plan. What I want you to do is the post you are writing right now, I want you to add affiliate links to it. So you're going to look at just what you're doing right now. Start with that post. So look at the post that you're writing and say, what products am I talking about? What products can I talk about that would feel natural and helpful to my readers that would help them do what I'm doing and then add an affiliate link. So there's going to be a little bit of work involved, especially if you are just starting out where you have to figure out where can my readers buy this product? And then you have to go sign up to be an affiliate for that, for that company or that brand. You, so what, and, sorry, I was going to say, do you recommend then just starting with Amazon, Amazon yeah, associates always. So what, what I always encourage people to do is to say, where's the easiest place for your reader to purchase this product? Nine times out of 10, it's going to be Amazon. Now, if you go to Amazon and you're like, this product is $120 here and it's $20 at michaels.com. Well, obviously you're going to promote Michaels, but most likely there, you're going to find a pretty reasonable price and that product will be available at Amazon. So start with Amazon. The other great thing about Amazon or let's say Walmart or Target or a big brand like that is that you're not gonna have to also convince your reader that that place that you want them to purchase the product at is legit. Yep. So like I, as your reader, am I gonna, I'm gonna look at this item that you're telling me that will make my life better doing activities with my kids. Um, If you link to Amazon, I don't have to go over the hurdle of, is this place reputable? How much is the shipping? How long is it gonna take to get to me? So that's why Amazon and the other big names are good to start with because 
you don't your your readers are just going to have to decide if they want the product or not in instead of also adding do i am i comfortable with the platform um the kind of not the bummer part but the thing to think about with amazon and the other big retailers is that the percentage that you will earn off of that um when you sell that item is fairly small compared to some of the other things that are out there that you can earn money off of but that's okay so i don't want to, you to go into your post today, put some Amazon links in there, and then expect that you're gonna make tons of money off of it. You will not. It's going to be a very slow, slow burn. But that's okay, because you're gonna start with the post today. Then you're gonna publish it, and you're gonna feel awesome about yourself, because you're gonna say like, I'm an affiliate marketer now. Then what I want you to do is to go into your Google Analytics and see what your highest trafficked post is. So whatever, what's number one, whatever it is, that means you're getting tons of traffic to it and it's gonna be most strategic for you to go into that post and add more affiliate links. So I, I want that. you to start with the post that you're doing today because I just want you to feel awesome about yourself. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to go to the post that you published last week because you're not getting a ton of traffic to that. I then want you to go to your most trafficked post. Figure out how you can monetize it and it's not rocket science. It's super easy. Um, one tip, you probably have a lot of food bloggers mm -hmm. and even like DIY bloggers, those types of things. And you're looking going, man, this recipe, I, I'm, I could add like a link to coconut milk and you do that. Like absolutely. If it, there's an opportunity do it. But one tip that I have that I use for my recipe posts, um, that especially get lots of traffic from Pinterest is at, at the bottom of that post, I say, um, I highlight a tool that was used in the creation of that recipe. So let's say it's a cookie recipe. At the bottom, I say, this is my very favorite rolling pin of all time. Here are the two reasons I love it. Here's a link to it on Amazon. It'll show up to your house in two days if you have Prime. Mm. So like, that's one thing, like just, you, if you're like this, it would be awkward to add a product in here put it at the bottom or maybe even like in a box in the middle. Um, and so it's kind of like um, a commercial interruption that people won't be annoyed by. They're like, oh, look, this is helpful. She's telling me this awesome product that she likes. Um, so that's another way to kind of get that content, that those links into your content. Right, it's funny. So, so at Milo Tree, we have an affiliate program. And the way it works is we, you sign up, uh, we have we use a company called Refersion. You get your link if you promote Milo Tree and somebody clicks on it and they sign up. We initially give 30 days free. So then, if that customer stays for 61 days, right? So they get through two payment cycles. We pay you twenty dollars. By the way, that's an amazing affiliate program. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. And again, what I have found is the people that are most successful, like, so there are certain affiliates that make a lot of sales, Milo Tree sales. They are the ones that at the bottom of their posts put their favorite tools. Love it. So it's, they don't have, and then they don't have to recreate, like, they ha already have it set. And I think there's even a plugin where you can add content to every post. And so all they have to do is just, you know, get that plugin to show up and on every single post. And a lot of these people are, let's say, you know, they have, they give blogging advice or whatever, but they, it just literally lives right there. So if you're a recipe blogger and you have, these are my five, you know, favorite tools you can keep recycling that in multiple posts. Absolutely, you can put it, like use a plugin for that. The, the beauty of the plugins is that you can swap things out. So let's say you're a recipe blogger, or really any type of blogger, and you have your five favorite tools like you suggested, which I love, and <clears throat> but you know that there's a big affiliate promotion coming up. I know that a lot of um, DIY and food bloggers and homemaking bloggers, they promote with ultimate bundles. That's a really popular and lucrative, it could be potentially lucrative um, affiliate program. You can swap the coding out for the period of that launch mm. because they do their bundles for, I think it's like five to 10 days. That's a promotional period. 
you can swap the coding out in that plugin for that period of time to promote just that ultimate bundle. Um, and then when that bundle is finished, you can, and so then all the posts that you have the coding in, it switches out. And then when the uh, launch is over, you don't have to update each post. You're just updating the plugin. Another that. thing you can do is um, like for my blog, I have different, several different types of content that I post. So I don't just do deals. I also do fashion and I do um, some recipes. So then you could put in templates when you create a new recipe, you could have a recipe template that has the kitchen tools at the bottom of it. And then if I do a fashion post, um, then that could have a different template so that you are speaking directly to the type of reader that's coming to your site. And you don't have to always reinvent the wheel. No, do the same thing. There's a lot of, there's this idea, um, someone calls it spotlight syndrome where some bloggers think that all of my readers consume all of my content. Yes. They read every single word and they yes. are just, they, they sit at home waiting for me to publish. And the reality is that ain't true. There's a, there's probably a small number of people who are ravenous about you. But if I look at my site, I get a ton of traffic from Pinterest. So I can have the very same tools or affiliate links in every single one of my recipe posts. Cause from Pinterest, I know that most of my Pinterest traffic is coming to my recipes that were created years ago. I haven't re written a recipe recipe post in like three years, but I still get tons of traffic from those older posts. I can have exactly, I can be promoting exactly the same affiliate programs or links um, in all of those posts and they will never know. They're never going to be like, why does she keep talking about this rolling pin? They don't care. Right. Oh, yes. I think that that is such an important idea that, that you brought up, which is people are not obsessed with you. We're all obsessed with ourselves. So I, try I won't tell, even I try remember. I tell my teenage daughter that all the time. <laughs> I know. I, that's a really good lesson. It kind of takes the pressure off. Absolutely. It really does. And I, for those of us who've been blogging a really long time, there was an obsession with bloggers like that I experienced probably five to 10 years ago where people did care about what I was producing and they were reading everything, but it's not like that anymore. No. There are so many places to consume content. Your readers apart from your mom and your best friend, like really don't care that much. Yes. Yes. Which like you said, gives you a lot of freedom to go hustle and make some money off of those posts. Yes. Now, can you explain cookies? Yes. So what happens is um, when you put an affiliate link into your post and a reader clicks on that link, it sets what we call a cookie on their device. And that means that for affiliate marketing, if that reader, the, per the clicker, makes a purchase within a certain period of time, it depends on the program. So for Amazon, I believe it's like 24 hours and Nordstrom, it's gonna be a little bit longer. Um, and then there's some affiliate programs that have what they call forever cookies, which means if they click on that link and they purchase um, through, you know, after clicking on your link on that same device, you get credit for that purchase. So if you make, if that reader makes a purchase within the cookie duration period, then you will make the commission or the referral fee off of that purchase. Now here, here's the thing, which I think is so interesting with Amazon, right? The percent, do you know what the percentage is or they don't really tell you what it is, right? It but, depends on with Amazon, everything. Amazon is just like Facebook and Google. Right. Um, it's kind of like, I don't really know what's going on over there, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut and enjoy the money they send me. Yes. Um, you don't want to rock the boat with Amazon. Um, but it depends on the item that the person purchases with Amazon, how much percentage you have. And then different associates that they're called Amazon associates make different percentages. So the percentage that I might make in my program is going to be different than yours, Jillian, and then okay. someone else. Yep. Um, now the great thing about Amazon as well as other programs out there is that when someone clicks the link for the rolling pin, 
they don't have to make, they don't have to purchase the rolling pin. If they purchase diapers and a DVD right. and a pair of shoes, right. I still make the affiliate commission off of that sale. So when you're thinking about Amazon and Walmart and Target, like places that have lots of different products, your strategy is a little bit, you want to entice them to click. Yep. Because then you know, like especially with Amazon, I just want to set the cookie so that if they purchase something else before they click someone else's affiliate link, because if they click someone else's affiliate link, now that affiliate or that associate gets credit for the purchase, um, I'm going to make money off of whatever they buy. So right. you're also thinking like this Amazon product, I want to make it interesting. I'm going to talk about it in a way that makes them want to go check it out. Not, I'm not talking about clickbait. I hate clickbait bait, but it's sometimes I put things in there just because I want them to click over so that I earn the right to make the affiliate commission off of their purchase for the next 24 hours. And then you hope that they buy a TV. Yes. Well, actually, the, the percentage on TVs is horrible. Oh, you want really? them to buy. Yeah, it's not good. Clothing. Clothing. Clothing is good. Oh, clothing is so good. Um, there's so, and that's the other thing is to look inside these programs, especially the, um, the bigger stores that have lots of different items to see which categories bring you the best commission rate okay. so that, you know, um, so you just can be more strategic with which products that you are promoting. So if you go and say, I love this particular item, but then you go to Amazon, you're like, Oh, they don't even give a commission on that. Well, you might not want to spend a whole lot of time on that review post, but if you, mm -hmm. or, or if you, you're like, I really am excited about put that in there, but then maybe add some items that could accompany that product or just like make it such amazing copy that people are like, I need to go check this TV out. And then you cross their fingers that they're going to buy syrup while they're over there. <laughs> so we, how do you find out what categories in Amazon give you the best affiliate fee? That's in the associates dashboard. You can okay. click around. I mean, okay. I could figure it out for you, but it's, it's going to be listed in there. It's not a secret. Um, the difference is, is that I know that different associates get different rates and it's not like you can email someone at Amazon and say, can you please review my account? and see if you can increase my rate. Like that's not happening with Amazon. That You could do that with some other retailers, like negotiate higher rates. Oh, really? Um, okay. Sure, yes. Especially the smaller company, um, the higher chance that you have that if you were to contact that affiliate manager um, and say, hey, look at, I want you to see you know, uh, the referrals or the, the business that I'm bringing you, um, you could say like, I have this one amazing post that is doing so well on Pinterest and it's converting really well. Um, could you give me a higher percentage? May wow. as well ask. So I know that that's happened for some people. I'm kind of lazy. Um, so I don't, and I don't like emailing, so I haven't really <laughs> pursued that so much. And you have five children. Yes. I, yeah, I, get I got it. some stuff going on over I here. I know. So here's a question then explain, uh, so, uh, okay, so I should sign up for Amazon Associates. Now, what other programs do you recommend I sign up for? For example, share a sale. Yes, how it works, and this is a little bit confusing to people. You've got Amazon, they kind of run their empire over there. Then, but with most retailers or brands or businesses that have affiliate programs, they are going to contract with what we can call affiliate companies. So you talked about ShareASale. So in ShareASale, they're kind of like a brokerage. So you can sign up for ShareASale and then you're not promoting ShareASale. You're promoting products or retailers that have contracted with ShareASale. So you're using ShareASale's um, platform to pull links, to view reporting, and they are the ones that pay you. But people, businesses work with ShareASale to be like their middleman. So if you go and say, I want to promote this particular product, you've got to figure out which company they're contracting with or if they run their own program. You're going to cross your fingers that they're contracting with a company because it makes your life so much easier. Right. So then you figure out what company that they are working with and you apply to that company. So that'd be ShareASale, Commission Junction, um, link share. There's, there's a, there's a handful impact radius. There's a handful of companies out there that do this type of work. So you apply to the company. So not like, to share a sale, right? You're applying um, to the company. 
Well, you first, it's easiest if you first get into share a sale, which anyone can get into share a sale unless you are, you know, doing something shady. Um, but then it makes it easier for when you apply for that particular brand, um, then you're already in the system. So let's use Nordstrom as an example, because the Nordstrom anniversary sale is coming up and I cannot wait to make money from Nordstrom. Love it. So, um, they contract with LinkShare. So I join LinkShare and then I go into LinkShare and I apply to be apply to run with Nordstrom. So then I have to wait for Nordstrom to uh, approve me. Once I'm approved by Nordstrom inside LinkShare, then I can start pulling links. That is the easiest way. That, that's how you work. So if you go to a website and you say, I want to promote their products, scroll down to the b- very bottom of the page. And usually in the footer, if they have an affiliate program, there's going to be a tiny little button that says affiliate or work with us, not work with us, that, uh, or like referrals or something like that. Click that. And it's going to tell you what company that they're working under. Um, and then you can apply. So some companies or retailers will approve you immediately. It's not usually the big ones. They want to manually approve you. Um, so most of them, you will apply inside share a sale, link, share commission junction, and then you will wait a period of time. It's usually between like a handful of minutes to sometimes weeks to wait for them to either approve or deny you. So once you're approved, then inside the affiliate platform, you'll be able to pull links. You'll, um, usually there's going to have, they'll have banners there. So image ads that you can use in your posts. They're also going to, um, oftentimes post deals or offers or promotions that they're running. So you can get certain links to that. And then inside there also, you're going to be able to, um, deep link to specific products. So for instance, if I'm promoting an item that's in the Nordstrom anniversary sale, I don't want to send my readers to the homepage at Nordstrom. They will not buy. You've got to remove as many obstacles as possible to them continuing to make their purchase. So I will go in that I will go inside link share into their deep linking tool and then find that and then link to that specific pair of shoes that I want my readers to buy. So that way, when they click a link on my website, they go directly to the shoes at Nordstrom. They don't have to do any extra work. That's great. So for us, like, tell me if I'm doing it right. Uh, on Milo Tree, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says affiliate. You click it. You end up applying to our program, which is run by a company called Refersion. And then I see the new applicants and I personally will approve them or not, depending on if I think they're spammy. I want, you know, real people who are promoting our product. And then they can get into the dashboard, their own dashboard with their own links to promote Milo Tree. Exactly. And the the approval process for most brands really is to make sure that you're not spammy, that you're not just like doing random links, that you're not trying to trick people into going to that website to buy something. Um, And also that the content aligns with, um, with the brand, because, you know, like in your case, you don't want just anyone promoting your brand because what's going to happen is, as you are strategically realizing is that if the link is placed on a site that doesn't make sense, you as the owner of Milo tree, um, you're going to get requests for returns. You're going to get hassles involved. So that's why, um, public, that's why, um, brands and businesses want to manually approve you. So usually when you're applying, um, they will have a box that says like, tell us your promotion strategy. Um, And that's just a piece of information that you can, if you want, include to try to get them to be excited about working with you. So an example, oftentimes I leave that box blank because I'm like, obviously, this is why I want to promote you. I'm not going to, I don't have time to tell you. But sometimes because um, a brand will see my site as a deal blog and they're like, I don't know if your readers are going to convert well. I don't know if this is going to water down my brand. I might go in and say like, for instance, for Nordstrom, say like I heavily promote, I want to heavily promote the anniversary sale. My readers are really excited to get, um, you know, a high quality brands at, at, you know, affordable prices and something like that so that they don't, cause oftentimes, um, big brands and businesses 
look at your site for about two seconds and decide if they should approve you or not. So if you add some information in there, if you're like, I feel like they might not want to work with me. If you include that information, then they might take some extra time to look at your site. Hmm. Can we talk about then spammy practices and this whole idea of people trying to get the last click and like how people abuse the system? Yes, I would say that your affiliate links are going to convert the best when you are being honest, you're being transparent, um, and you're not just trying to get the click. Also, that spammy practice really doesn't result in sales. You know, the more, like I experiment a lot and I'm not, I haven't, I don't I think ever crossed the line to clickbait, but I have experimented with, with language that I use around my linking, my links. And the more authentic I am, the more information that I give up front in my posts or what I post on Facebook or something, the more likely it is that my reader is that that's going to convert. So I find, I don't like the whole, like check this item out, like check the new thing out that I love so much. Well, yeah, you just like set a cookie, but is your reader going to be frustrated? And I know as for me as a reader, when I do that, I click over, I'm like, Oh, you just showed me a pair of underwear. Why did mm. it, why did that happen? Um, that turns me off. So I find the more information that I, as a content creator, that I give my reader in the post, in the Facebook post, wherever it is, answering their questions before they get over there, I'm probably gonna get less clicks than if I were to try some clickbaity type of stuff, but I'm going to sell more when I'm being the most helpful in the content that I create. Mm. So if I'm promoting a product that maybe people haven't um, had exposure to before, I try to answer all the questions that they may have about it before I send them over there. Now that doesn't mean that like my link is at the very bottom of the post. I'm putting links throughout so it's mm -hmm. easy for people to click. Mm -hmm. um, so they so they don't have to scroll to the bottom to figure out where they're going. But my post is gonna be as helpful as possible. And again, my clicks might be less. Um, like I might not have as many clicks. I don't give a rip about clicks unless of course I'm setting a cookie on Amazon, but I, I want to sell that thing. So I want them to go over there and purchase. That's when I have success. Right. And it's also, it's your reputation on the line. Absolutely. Like if, if my Facebook page feed is filled with what I perceive to be kind of clickbaity, and maybe it's not like being super slimy or anything, but like not especially helpful. I'm not going to, I'm like, I'm not unfollow or unlike that page. So um, again, I find the more information I ha I put into those posts mm -hmm. um, with that content, the more my readers trust me as a place to find valuable and helpful information and then they stick around and wanna buy from me. Right, I get that. Now here's a question. So how do you disclose? Can we talk about disclosure? Yes. First of all, don't be scared of disclosure. I'm in some Facebook groups with bloggers at varying levels and varying niches. And the fear that some bloggers have about the FTC rules is almost humorous to me. Um, so I kind of roll like, um, it does not have to be complicated. So on my website, every single one of my posts has an affiliate disclosure at the top. It is a plugin that shows up right underneath my title and it goes to every single one of my posts. I do that in particular because Jillian, there's not a single post on my website that does not have an affiliate link. If I don't have an <laughs> affiliate link in a post, I'm not doing my job well. Right. Now I right. realize that that's not every single blogger, but there is, because I want you to be monetizing your posts, adding affiliate links um, into old content, a, a, um, a plugin with your affiliate disclosure works really well. So something very similar, uh, very simple, like this post may contain affiliate links, which makes I make a, which means I make a small commission when you make a purchase. You can read my full disclosure here, and that links to your disclosure or your disclaimer page. No, it's not disclaimer. Disclosure page where you say more of the specific language. So that's at the top of every single one I, of my posts. I'm good. When I link to that post from Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest, I don't disclose on that post 
because the disclose when they are actually making the purchase or clicking, the disclosure is there. So if I'm on Facebook and I say, check out this recipe I just created, I don't have to disclose that there's affiliate links in that post because it's disclosed on the blog. Because they're going to your blog. Because they're going to the blog and that's where they click the link. If I am on Facebook and I am putting it on my page or in one of my public groups, because I have a number of groups that I run that are about specific areas like fashion and deals and those types of things. Um, in there, if I'm using an affiliate link in that post, I disclose there. So I will mm. say something simply like, this is an affiliate link. I explain what affiliate link, link means. Not necessarily to a, because some people will do like hashtag affiliate link or yeah. AFFIL. Can you do that? Can you go like hashtag AFFIL? Here's the deal is that no regular person knows what that means. Okay. And I think the spirit of the FT, I'm not an ex expert, I'm not a lawyer, whatever. But I think the spirit of it, of the FTC rules, is that a regular person will know that it's an affiliate link. Okay. Regular people don't even know what the word affiliate means. Right. So right. you could say referral link. I, I think that's kind of clear. You could say hashtag ad. I don't know. Maybe an ad to me means that I'm being paid to produce that content, not that I make money when you click the link. So I say... I put little arrows that say, this is an affiliate link, which means I make a small commission if you make a purchase. You'd write that whole thing out in yes. a Facebook post. Absolutely. I put it okay. in little parentheses and then I move on. Now I, I put that, sometimes I put that right next to the affiliate link. Here's the cool thing about when you add that little affiliate link portion right after the link. So I put, I copy the URL space bar, put in affiliate link. I make a little bit of money. It shortens the affiliate link because mm -hmm. sometimes affiliate links can, well, most of the time they are long and ugly and it's confusing because it doesn't say walmart.com. Um, right. It has all these weird letters that is confusing to the reader. So it shortens that so they don't see this like seven line long URL. Okay. Okay. So um, I will put that in. Now with Amazon, this is so important. You cannot say, so Amazon, again, they play by their own rules. You can't say this is an affiliate link, which means that I make a little bit of money when you click it because Amazon views that as enticing people to, to click the link. Ooh. Okay. You, you can't entice people to click the link. So we've been doing this on my Facebook page forever and ever and ever. Amen. And now Amazon's coming out saying that in, that encourages people to click your link and make the purchase. So what you're supposed to say with Amazon, it's very short. It's something like I am a, am a participate in participant in Amazon Associates and I earn, I earn money that way. They have like this language. I can give it to you that you can post. Yes, later. I'll put it in the show notes. I put that in every single one of my Amazon posts. Okay. I don't, I am so not interested in making them mad. It does like I will put whatever language they want me to put in that post. And it also communicates to the reader who is clicking that link. They then understand the relationship that I have with Amazon. And, um, I, and I know that people are sometimes, especially when they start out, that they're worried about people not clicking the link because they're like, oh, she's just trying to make money off of it. Most people understand that you're making money off of this. They're just happy that they know. And I honestly, most people aren't reading it anyways. <laughs> so, so I disclose on everywhere where that affiliate link actually lives, disclose it. Got it. And then Got you're it. good. That's all you have to do. So, okay. Just, do you have like, um, on your, on your main Facebook page, if people go there, can they see you doing this? Like what's a, where can somebody see you? If you go to facebook.com slash frugal living Northwest NW, okay. um, frugal living NW, you can see what we're posting on Facebook and probably one or two times a day, we will post, um, a direct link to Amazon because we know that that converts well for us. Now I know there are some bloggers who run very successful Facebook pages and they link to Amazon and it does not convert. But mm. again, my readers are ready to get a deal. And so that works well for us. If you go to, um, I run a couple of, again, I told you before, um, 
public Facebook groups that we drop affiliate links inside of. Um, and we disclose that and that works really well for us. But again, those people have self-selected saying, I want to buy stuff off of Amazon. And so that right. works really well for us. I wanted to take a short break and say that if you're enjoying the Blogger Genius podcast, then that says something really special. What it says is you take your business seriously. This is not a hobby for you. And if you haven't checked out Milo Tree, I recommend you do. Milo Tree is a series of smart pop-ups you install on your site that asks your audience to follow you on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or YouTube or subscribe to your list. It will put that job on autopilot so you can focus on the other aspects of your business. We offer your first 30 days free, so there's really no risk to you. And I think you'll like it. So now back to the show. Yes. So, okay. So you, okay. So of the social networks, which for you is the most successful at converting affiliate sales? Like, can you talk through Facebook or how about Pinterest? Because can, isn't, it, can you link a product? Let's say it's an Etsy product and Etsy has an affiliate program. Uh, can I just take an image from Etsy, put my affiliate link, uh, link, put my affiliate link in the link to that pin and make money? Okay. You just opened a huge can of worms. Okay. <laughs> so <Ready>? first, <laughs> There is, when, when we kind of dive, start diving deep into affiliate marketing, lots of people have lots of opinions. So we'll start with the image thing. Can you pull an image off of, let's say, Etsy and put in an affiliate link? Eh, probably not Etsy. I wouldn't do that. Um, okay. On Pinterest, in, you're saying? On Pinterest, yes. yes. Okay. So then people say, can I use a product image from Amazon? Some people have very strong opinions on that. They're very scared of Amazon shutting them down. I am more laid back about that type of thing. Um, now, Pinterest has some pretty specific rules when it comes to affiliate market, like using affiliate links on Pinterest. And it changes all the time. Yes. And, and honestly, I have not even started direct linking or using direct affiliate links on Pinterest. Okay. Um, and, and part of that is because an, a Pinterest audience isn't necessarily ready to buy. They are ready to be inspired. So I don't know how much time, um, how profitable it is to spend a bunch of time dropping affiliate links in Pinterest. I would much, I would much rather your readers and for me to create amazing content on my website that has affiliate links in it and then promote those posts on Pinterest. Pinterest. Yes. Got it. And so what I will say is you publish a post today. And when we publish a post today, we're publishing for our audience, the people who love us, who subscribe to our emails. That's what they're getting today. Like you're thinking about that reader in one year, that post, the reader to that post is probably not going to be one of your ravenous tribe members. It's most likely going to be someone from Google or Pinterest. So then what I would say is if you see a post that was published a while ago, that's getting a lot of traffic from Pinterest or even Google or something from Google search, I want you, I would suggest you go into that post and say, now my reader of this post is no longer a ravenous fan. It is a very casual, unattached Pinterest person. How can I get them to my affiliate links? So what I might say is if you're getting a ton of traffic from Pinterest on a DIY or a recipe post or something, and you have the first 700 words of that post is a story mm -hmm. about your life and you're getting lots of traffic to it, but not making a lot of money, it's probably because people are clicking off of that post be because your story is so long. Now, yep. I'm not saying that you shouldn't write stories, but like there are I know as a Pinterest user, I'm like, give me to the recipe. I don't care totally. about your dog. I, I am with you. Yes. Yes. And so you, if you have this post that is getting thousands of page views or even hundreds of page views, but it's like a lot more than every other post on your site, you might want to edit that story to get people to the content they're looking for as quickly as possible to increase the chance that they're going to click on your affiliate link. So you could even, oh my goodness, I thought of this the other day. You could put a little bit of code in the post and you can Google this. It's easy to do to say like, jump to the recipe. 
So they click that link inside, like at the top of the post, and then they skip the story if you want to keep the story in there. So then they go directly to the recipe where you have affiliate links. That would be a way to really serve that Pinterest user, get them on your site longer and increase the chance that they are going to click on your link. I love that. I, I love that because you are segregating your readers, your visitors, those that are the diehard visitors who, who know your five children, you know, know the names of your dog, um, you care about your, your whole um, home redesign, you know, and I can't wait to see the pictures of your new living room versus the people who go to Pinterest and who just, you know, Pinterest changed the game. Because don't you remember back in the day when you followed certain bloggers and people would come to the homepage of your blog and like go explore through it. And then mm -hmm. Pinterest came and you just hopscotch in and out. Exactly. And so it's a really good idea to modify your content if you're getting the hopscotchers hop from Pinterest, make it really easy for them to find what they're looking for and also to get their eyes on your affiliate links. You already served your ravenous audience with this amazing blog post. Those people probably aren't gonna read it again. They're finished with that, they've moved on to your new content. So now maximize those posts for the people who are at your site for about two seconds before they, realize, they figure out if it's gonna be helpful to their immediate need or not. I like that. I like that. I do. Okay. One, one thing, SEO. I looked at your site and in your blog posts, you will put specific in the titles, you're putting product names. You're putting, and my assumption is that people are Googling for that stuff. What, what is your strategy there? Okay. I, well, first of all, I don't have a lot of strategy when it comes to SEO. Okay. I, um, I hope that I am like demonstrating that you can make money off of your blog and not care about a lot of things. So I don't, <laughs> I, I don't really think a whole lot about Google. The things that you are um, looking for or that you're looking at are posts about Amazon deals that are happening today. So okay. I have a contributor. She figures out what amazing deals are available on Amazon and we post about that. Those posts strategically are for my tribe, the people who are checking out my site every day, they are reading my daily email because they get an email from me every single day. They want that. Mm. I mean, that's amazing. And they are looking to buy stuff. That content is going to be dead in a couple of days. Mm. So there, there are some posts that I'm promoting products that Google does pick up. Um, and basically those posts are mostly getting spam comments. So like people trying to, you know, catch some of my juice. Um, from Google. So I often look and go, oh, this post about this random, I don't know, electric shaver must be doing well on Google because I'm getting a bunch of spam comments. So what I try to do with my titles is just be as helpful as possible, meaning that I want people who are reading the emails because they get it in an RSS feed. I mean, can you even believe that I'm still doing RSS emails? Wow. I do other emails wow. as well. Wow. But I mean, that demonstrates like deal blogs. There's people who just want just the tell deal. me what you posted today and I can quickly go through it. I want that um, title to be as helpful as possible so that they click on it and then go check out those deals. Could we just for a sec, sorry, explain what that means that you do an RSS email every day? An RSS email is instead of me going into my email program and writing an email and sending it myself, that it pulls it automatically. So for mine, I send from out- your blog, from, from your my blog, blog post. Exactly. So every 24 hours, certain a certain list of subscribers um, will get the last 24 hours worth of posts that I published um, in their email. So then they can click the different posts and be taken to like if they're interested in that. There's You can do an RSS email, which means that every time you not every 24 hours, but you publish a certain type of post. So like every time I publish a Safeway post, because that's a popular grocery store in the Northwest, then that list of people who've subscribed to that RSS feed will get that Safeway post. Got so it. it's it's just a way that I, um, it's, the, it's kind of the lazy, but also sometimes strategic way to get those posts into people's emails. Now what I will say is that they don't convert super well. And that's why so many, I mean, most bloggers should move away from RSS because the RSS is just like, hey, a new post is published, here's the link to it. 
there's nothing personal involved. So it requires that reader who gets the RSS email in their inbox to go, that title is intriguing, I'm gonna click on it. So it really works well if you publish tons of content, like I'm, we're publishing between five and seven posts a day on my website. Wow. Um, so it, that serves that well. And it also helps me because then I don't have to like email everyone every day. Cause I don't do anything every day. I'm, right. I'm not that disciplined. Um, right. And so that works well for me for like 98% of the people listening to this podcast do not do RSS emails, please. Okay. Please now, what is, what is the deal, though, with putting affiliate links in newsletters? Like, is it okay? Right. Like, doesn't MailChimp say you can't do that? Oh, I certainly hope not. I don't, I've never used MailChimp, so I don't okay. know what their rules are. There are some um, email marketing services that do have rules about affiliate links. Okay. If you're, so run, if you're running into that, then you need to find a new email provider because, um, you can use affiliate. You should be able, I want you to put affiliate links in your emails. You absolutely should. One thing though, is you cannot, oh, please listen to this. Everyone. You cannot put an affiliate, an Amazon affiliate link in an email that they will Ooh. shut you down. So can fast. You, can you go through that? Yes. This is one of the biggest rules I see people breaking and I see giant bloggers making like seven figures doing this. It, it, it just gives me a panic attack. You cannot, in, according to Amazon's per, um, policies, you cannot put one of their affiliate links in an email. You also cannot put your affiliate link in a PDF, mm. in an ebook. You cannot do that. And so the way to think about it is, it's really easy to figure out if you can or can't do it. Amazon has to be able to have a person view that link on the internet. So they can't see the link in your ebook. They don't know where it's coming from. They can't see it from their email. They also can't see it in a closed Facebook group or a private Facebook group. If you're gonna use Amazon affiliate links in a Facebook group, that group needs to be public. Ooh, yes. okay. So, if so you have, your Facebook groups are public. My Facebook groups that I use as Amazon affiliate links are public, which means that any person can see where it's coming from. Now that rule does not apply to other affiliate programs. I think okay. people get confused. They hear, I can't use an affiliate link from Amazon in an email, so they don't use any affiliate links in emails. No, it's just Amazon. So okay. you can put an affiliate link to, I mean, I all I'm thinking about right now is Nordstrom. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can, I'm so excited. Um, you can put an affiliate link for Nordstrom or for Michaels or for Target. Like that's okay. As long as you disclose at the top of your email, this email contains affiliate links, which means I make a small commission when you click and make a purchase. And you can add at no additional cost to you if you'd like. Um, so if you want to promote an Amazon product in your email, you either, that affiliate link needs to go to, it's not an affiliate link, you're linking, the best way to do it, and it's kind of clunky, I'm sorry, is to link to a page on your website that you're promote that you're talking about that product. So you could review it. it or something like that. Or you yep. could link to your Facebook page where you have the affiliate link there. Does that make sense? So go over that again. And if you want to promote an affiliate, an Amazon product and make money off of it in your email, yep, you have to get them to a place on the web yep, where that where affiliate they can link, see that link. Correct. So that could be on your website where you could, you could even do a page that has like, here's the instant pot that I love. And here's the link. It could have like two lines. Then, then that affiliate link lives there. Or you could link to your Facebook page where you're talking about the instant pot. Got it but it cannot it. go, or you can put an affiliate link. This is where it gets kind of funky with Amazon. If you have an influencer page, you can use your affiliate link in your email that goes to your influencer page because they're not making the purchase from the email. They're going to your influencer page and then making the, making the purchase from there. And influencer pages should be available to all associates as of right now. Can you explain what that is? Oh, it's kind of like, it looks like a storefront where yep. you go to this page, it's your Amazon influencer page and it has products that you love. 
So, you know, you could be like, here's my, here's the things that I love for my website or things that we use. And all of those items are there. And then, so you can link to that page from your email. I have just started out. It's kind of fairly new. I'm not sure how well that's converting. Like it's actually getting sales, but it is one way to link use an affiliate link inside your emails. That's really the only way that you can do it in a way that isn't clunky for your email reader. So, you know, give it a shot. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. I love this. Okay. I love this. All right. So Angela, if you are a, a new blogger and it feel, you know, they've just listened to this podcast and it feels kind of overwhelming, let's say, what piece of advice would you have for them? Again, just start. So mm. sign up for Amazon Associates. Again, you're not going to get rich. You're going to see stuff on Pinterest and Google that says like, I went from zero to $22,000 a month selling Amazon. No, you're not. I don't know who those people are. Mm. Um, I sell so much stuff over Christmas and I don't make $22,000 a month. Mm. Um, like it's, it's hard work and you're putting lots of links in, but sign up for Amazon and in your, for, in a post, just get a link in there. Try to figure out the language that you're comfortable with to get people interested in clicking that link. And again, part of that's going to be you getting over your fear of selling, feeling like you're not being authentic. Cause for, again, some reason, like, the only way a woman can be authentic is if she's giving herself away for free. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh girl, yes. no. Make some money off of this. You deserve to make cash. Um, so start putting links in there. So any content that you create from now, like now on, tell yourself, I'm going to include an affiliate link. I have to do this. And then when you feel good about it, again, like I said before, like you feel awesome, then start working on past content. And then... Mm work, say like, I'm going to do one post a week of past content for the next 10 weeks. It does. You do not have to go down to like your 60th most trafficked post. You're not going to make money off of that. Like at least I look at my Google analytics. I'm like, I had 22 people visit this page. That's not worth my time. Yep. But start working on adding links. And then when you write your emails, what I want you to do is I want you to sell something in every single email, which sounds like you've got to be kidding me. But what that really means is I want you to tell them in each email you write, let's say you write one email a week, tell them of a product you love. Hmm. Figure out how you can do that. I see tons of bloggers who don't even incorporate it into, their, into the text of their email. They just put it as like an aside at the bottom. Like here's a, like kind of like a newsletter, like they have different, or like a newspaper, we have different sections. The section at the bottom can be the thing I'm loving this week. And I like make that. it an affiliate link. Now, again, you can't put in a, an Amazon affiliate link in there. So make it Walmart, make it Target, make it something that you can put the email, the, the affiliate link in there. And it's not because I think you're gonna sell a bunch of stuff right off the bat. It's because I need you to start training, training your, your yep. readers to click, yep. Yep. training your readers to expect that selling is a part of how you do your job. Yep. Then but, when, go ahead. Yeah. Well, then when you have a big affiliate promotion that comes up, you want to promote ultimate bundles. There's a big um, offer for a product that you love and it's super on sale. Uh, something like that where you want to hit it hard and try to make money off of this, they are already accustomed to clicking your links and buying stuff or, or being okay with you talking about buying stuff. So like if you have, if you're sending out an email that is all text and there's no click, how do you expect those people when something awesome comes up that you want to promote that they're willing to click? You haven't trained them to click out of your emails. Yes. Also, I think about it this way, which is in my, when I subscribe to somebody's email list and they share what they're loving, what product they're loving, it gives me insight into them and what kind of person they are. Like, ooh, what, what kind of cleaner does she like? Or what kind of jewelry is she excited about? Like, it's, a, it's another side that when you're sharing something, really it's like sharing a side of you. 
Exactly. And women in particular want to know what they should buy next. What should they discover next? What should they be trying out? And we all are looking for input. So give them what they want. So here's an example. I found these most amazing shoes on Amazon. These shoes are $14. I I don't know what is going on. They are, they're cute. They're super comfortable. I cannot wait to promote those shoes. And my readers are going to go bonkers over these shoes because they're affordable, they're cute, and I'm going to tell them why they're so awesome. So just figure out something that you love and then figure out how you can communicate your love for that product um, in various different ways and just try it out. And I promise you that most of your readers are going to think it's fabulous. You will have readers who fuss at you. 100%. You're going to have people say, I can't believe you're selling to me. I'm so offended. I mean, the things that people get offended about, like I'm selling you shoes and you're offended. That's when you're going to do some self-talk. Like those people, they're not, they're a little off. I don't, I don't reply to those emails. If someone fusses at me about selling, I just delete it. Like, and, and that's how I personally roll. As you can tell, I'm kind of like, I don't have time for that business. Um, and, and you can choose to reply as long as the email you send, you're seeing an ROI, you're seeing a return on investment. So if you're going to spend an hour and a half writing back to a woman who's mad that you're selling a pair of shoes, um, I, you better be making money off of that hour and a half of that response that you give to her. Oh, wait, you're never going to make money off of it. It's not worth your time. I love it. All right, Angela, this has been terrific. I, like so nuts and bolts which is what I love. So if people want to reach out to you to see you get your deals, um, learn more about affiliate marketing, how can they do that? Well, if you would like to learn kind of how I sell, um, you can go to frugallivingnorthwest.com and you can see how we structure our blog posts, how we talk about products. Go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash frugallivingnw. You can see how we are you know, promoting things on Amazon, how we're doing Facebook Lives to sell things. I think it's helpful to watch people who are good at selling and comfortable with it to see the tax, tactics that they're using so you can figure out what's going to work for you. So you can see kind of um, our lab on how we sell things on Frugal Living North, frugallivingnorthwest.com. But also I'm starting something new. It's called Your Affiliate Marketing Mentor. Um, And that's going to be, it's a website and a podcast where I am talking the nuts and bolts and going deep into affiliate marketing. So my goal is to help bloggers, content creators, and social media influencers um, make more money on the work that they're already doing. We're also starting a new um, Facebook group um, that will um, kind of deep dive even more into affiliate marketing. And you can find us there at youraffiliatemarketingmentor.com slash Facebook to join that group. Oh, Angela, thank you so much for being on the show. This was super fun. Thank you so much. 